welcome to lecture 20 so in the last class we were discussing great orthogonality theorem and uh, let me write down the expression for great orthogonality theorem again so this is summation over all r again where r is the symmetry operation in a particular point group and then tau i is the ith irreducible representation and this represents the mth row and nth column matrix element under symmetry operation r for a ith representation so that means this particular is a matrix element and this is a second matrix element which is represented by jth under the same symmetry operation r with different mth and row nth elements and this is given by h over li lj with Kronecker deltas of delta ij m m prime and n prime and of course we did not discuss this in the last lecture but one of the factors will be a complex conjugate if we are dealing with complex numbers here so the matrix elements can take complex numbers we will see that when we will come to cyclic groups so in this when we are having complex numbers in matrix elements we have to take complex conjugate for one of the factors here and the rest of the theorem remains same so let me see it represents complex conjugate when dealing with complex numbers okay so now let us see how do we use great orthogonality theorem or got as we call it to actually identify whether a particular representation is reducible or irreducible so sometimes it is difficult to find out by block factorization so we can easily use got rules in that case and uh, we'll see how so let us again take the case of water molecule and let us develop a representation we don't know whether it is reducible or irre irreducible but let us take the basis set as uh, this is my phi which is the basis set as 1s orbital of h a uh, let's call it as h a and this one is h b 1s orbital of h b and 1s orbital of oxygen this is my basis set so basis set is these three orbitals so let us try to take these basis sets and develop a representation again we don't know whether it's a reducible or irreducible representation okay so the dimension of the matrix will be 3 cross 3 because the number of bases is 3 so point group is c to v e and let's call it as tau m because the dimension is 3 cross 3 e will be a unit matrix of order 3 right so this we have seen every time so e will always be a unit matrix of a particular order and the order will be defined by the number of basis sets in the basis set vector now that means the trace under e will define the order of the irreducible representation or the dimension of the irreducible representation which is defined by li so in this case if we take the trace under representation e any matrix under e the trace will come out to be 3 and that 3 will be the dimension of tau m in this case li is equal to 3 because trace of matrix under e will be 3 okay so this is just to highlight because we'll be using this property later so c2 z now can can you think what will be this thing so if i'm taking h a h a will be replaced with h b that means this will be 0 1 1 0 and z or 
1 s o remains same so this will be 1 s o okay now for sigma x y or we can call it as in this case sigma v1 and then we have sigma v2 okay so let's see what is sigma v1 so let's say sigma v1 is the one which is perpendicular to the plane okay so again sigma v1 s o orbital will remain as it is so it will be 1 now s h a and h b will be reflected so we'll have 0 1 1 0 okay now for sigma v2 it will be the molecular plane so everything will remain at its own place so that means this will be like a unit unitary or the identity matrix right 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 so now let's say if we want to reduce this let's say if we uh, it looks like as a reducible representation why it looks like a reducible representation because i can see that this can be easily block factored in 2 cross 1 and 1 cross 1 matrix right you cannot block factor into 1 cross 3 1 cross 1 because this one is a square matrix of 2 cross 2 order so i can block factor it by 2 cross 2 and 1 cross 1 but can it be further reduced okay so let's say if i block factor it and write it as tau 1 and tau 2 which is 1 0 0 1 and 1 then i write it as 0 1 1 0 and 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 0 1 and 1 so at this point i know that this one is a irreducible representation because this is already of the order one you cannot reduce this further so this is irreducible now whether this is a reducible or irreducible i don't know i can always say that let's say like in the case of c3v x and y are not separable so i can say that these two are the basis whatever is the basis set for this representation are not separable in this particular case and that's why it is giving me a 2d representation right two dimensional representation so this can be a irreducible representation but this can also be a reducible representation if we manage to find matrix such that we can carry out a similarity transformation to convert into a diagonalized matrix and uh, that is a tedious process so we don't know whether a u prime exists such that a similarity transformation of this will convert into block diagonalized matrix of one cross one right so in that case we will be away again able to reduce it further to two one cross one matrices right but we don't know at this point whether it is possible or not so let us try to apply the got properties to these two representation considering that it's a ir representation so this got applies only to ir representation that is irreducible representation so if these properties which is defined by this particular equation this this equation if these properties are valid on these two representations that means both of them will be ir representation if these properties are not valid then we can say that this is not a ir representation this we already know that it's a ir representation okay so let us try to find out uh, how to do that so let us try to calculate summation over all r tau 1 r 1 1 okay and tau 2 r 1 1 so what should be the value of this 
in two different representations if we are taking the same corresponding matrix element the product should come out to be zero so let's see for our case whether it comes out to be zero or not so under all symmetry operations we have to take the product of the corresponding matrix elements so that means this 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 into this 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 right so 1 into 1 0 into 1 0 into 1 1 into 1 so that means 1 into 1 plus 0 into 1 plus 0 into 1 plus 1 into 1 this should turn out to be 0 however we are getting this as 2 which is not equal to 0 right so this tells us that since this product is not going to 0 that means the GOT property is not valid and we know that tau2 is irreducible representation this implies that tau1 is not a irreducible representation and can be reduced further okay so let's also consider the case we already know that we have seen for water the set of irreducible representations are obtained by unit vector transformations right so we got four such representations which was one 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 minus one minus one one minus one minus one 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 minus one one minus one so now if we apply the the same property so let's take the product of any two matrix elements and take the sum this will always come out to be zero so let's do this one to one plus one into one plus one into minus one plus one into minus one this will be zero so you can test any of these two all four tau 1 tau 2 tau 3 tau 4 will be orthogonal to each other which satisfies the rule of got right so i can say that tau 1 dot tau 2 equals 0 tau 2 tau 3 equals 0 any two products you can take in this case right everything will be equal to 0 so that tells that the rules of got are valid in this case so this is how you can test any given representation for whether it's a reducible or a irreducible representation okay so that's one very nice application and let us now look at the five properties which we will be using to develop ir representations for a given point group so five properties of got okay so the first property is sum of the squares of the dimensions of an ir representation of a point group is equal to the order of the group order of the group is h so what does it say that sum of the squares of dimension of an ir representation so dimension of the ir representation is denoted by li so that is li square for various i's is equal to h in other words we can say that l1 square plus l2 square plus l3 square is equal to h right or we can also say since the character or trace
of the E operation is equal to dimension of the IR representation. Now we know that the character or trace of the matrix for E operation is equal to dimension of the IR representation. So we can always say character of E square summation over all i i is equal to h right so this will be summation over all i so this is our first property so we will see the use of different properties and we will not provide proof of all the properties because that is uh, not in the scope but for a couple of properties i will provide which for which the proofs are straightforward rest of the proofs you can actually find in different mathematical group theory books but these proofs do not concern in the applications of group theory to chemical applications so that's why we are not including here so let's look at the second property so second property says the sum of the squares of the character of any given IR representation is equal to H. Mathematically speaking, sum of the squares that is character of under any operation and square of that under all operations is equal to h so if you are taking trace of a matrix under a particular symmetry operations and we square it and take the sum over all symmetry operations what we will get is uh, h so let us try to prove this one because the proof is straightforward so let us do this so let's start with got which is summation over all r tau i r mn and tau j r m prime n prime is equal to h over l i l j delta i j delta mm prime delta nm prime so i'm not putting the complex conjugate or you can actually put complex conjugate also here so that doesn't matter okay for a given ir representation we can say that i is equal to j right because it says for any given IR representation. So we are not taking product of two different IR representations. We are just considering here single IR representation. That means I is equal to J here. So let's do that. So what we will get is summation over all R tau I R M N tau I R M prime N prime and so let's drop the star here because we are not considering any complex conjugate or if there is a complex conjugate you can consider star doesn't matter here so delta I J term is gone because that will be equal to 1 and L I and L J will become L I square so the square square root will cancel so you will have H over L I and delta mm prime delta nn prime okay now because we are interested in trace so we have to consider only the diagonal elements so for diagonal elements what will be the condition m will be equal to n and m prime will be equal to n prime 
So that means we are getting rid of one set of indices here. So this implies summation over all r tau i r so put m equal to n so you have m m and tau i r m prime equal to n prime so you will have m prime m prime right so now you don't have that index so there is no point writing the Kronecker delta for this. So m m prime. So that goes right. So equation is reduced for diagonal elements. We have this. Now from diagonal elements, if you have to go to trace, then we have to sum over all m. We will get trace of this matrix. If we sum over all m prime, we will get sum of this matrix. So what we will do is we will take summation. So on both sides, we will take summation over all m and summation over all r, all m prime. And we already had summation over all r. So what do we have? Tau i r m m tau i r m prime m prime. And this will be equal to summation m, summation m prime, h over li, delta m, m prime, right? Now this summation only applies to first term because the index is m, index is only over here. m prime will apply only to this one. So we can write, take these summations inside. So we will have summation r. summation m you can write this as tau i r m m and summation m prime tau i r m prime m prime right now let us expand one of these summations. So if we open this summation, so let's say h over li summation m. So this becomes delta m1. So I'm expanding m prime from 1 to li, right? Plus delta m2, delta m3 and so on this goes up to delta m l because that's the dimension of the matrix dimension of the ir representation that means dimension of the matrix so m prime varies from 1 to l i right so this is one now let's say this particular term is equal to this is equal to trace this is also equal to trace, right? So we have got what we wanted on the left hand side. So what we have here is summation over all i trace of ith representation under the operation r. And this is also trace of ith representation under operation r. So this becomes square, right? And we wanted this to prove at the left hand side was this, right? Now let us see how do we get h out of this. So h upon li. Now let's try to expand summation m over here. So let's take the delta m1, the first term here, and expand. So this will be delta 1, 1 plus delta 2, 1 plus delta 3, 1, and so on, delta li one that's my first term this comes as a result of expansion of this one similarly for delta m2 we will have delta 1 2 plus delta 2 2 plus 
delta 3 2 plus delta l i 2 right so this comes as an expansion of this one similarly we can keep on going and then for last one we will have delta 1 l i plus delta 2 l i plus delta l i l i right now if you notice each of this term will go to zero except where the indices are same so delta 1 1 will remain as 1 and rest all will go to zero so that means out of each bracket i will get 1 right so h upon li i get 1 from here i get 1 from here because again 1 2 will be 0 3 2 will be 0 and so is li 2 only delta 2 2 will survive similarly from the next term delta 3 3 will survive and then here delta li li will survive so i will keep on getting 1 up to li times because the dimension of this was li so originally it was li so we will get li times 1 this implies that we will get li over here h over li into li which is equal to h that is the square of the trace under any symmetry operation over all symmetry operations is equal to h all right so that was easy to show now let's look at third property so we will quickly see third fourth and fifth property and then we will do illustrations of these properties in the next class So now it is saying that the vectors whose components are characters of two different IR representations are orthogonal. So again, let us start with the statement of GOT and then we will keep on simplifying that MN and tau J R M prime M prime is equal to H over Again, I'm uh, dropping star over here, but explicitly I'm not writing every time, but I mean it is there if we are using any complex number. So for two different representations, we know that I is not equal to J, right? This implies that our right hand side goes to 0. We already know that because i is not equal to j, delta ij will be equal to 0, turning everything else equal to 0. We don't care about now what happens here, right? Now, for the left hand side, if i is not equal to j, we can write it as. right now again for diagonal elements what you do is equate m equal to n and m prime equal to n prime we can do that because we are only choosing diagonal elements out of this so once we do that and then we take for trace if we take summation over all m and summation over all m prime we will get trace like in the last property we saw that this is equal to nothing but square of trace under representation under ith representation for a particular symmetry operation and square of this and right hand side we have already seen that it is equal to zero right so this was very simple to prove basically left hand side was very similar to the second property too and right hand side is very 
simple to show that it is equal to zero because delta i j i is not equal to j so everything goes to zero so let's look at the fourth property again fourth property we have already shown before in a given representation now this can be reducible or irreducible so that's why it says in a given representation the characters of all matrices belonging to operations in same class are identical right so what i'm saying is in a given representation the characters of all matrices belonging to operations in same class are identical we have already seen that operations under same class are related to each other by similarity transformation and similarity transformation does not change the trace so that means the character or the trace of the matrix will not change so there is nothing to prove here we have already shown this by showing that the trace of a is equal to trace of a prime where a prime is equal to right this we have shown trace of a is equal to trace of a prime which is trace is called as character here where a prime is nothing but u inverse a and u so there is nothing to prove here but this can also be shown as a proof from got we have shown it using non got but got can also be used to show this again we are not going to discuss this and the fifth property which is derived from got is that the number of ir representations in a group is equal to the number of classes this also we have seen so these are the five properties of uh, great orthogonality theorem and we have seen couple of proofs but rest of them we are just using the properties as is so now we should be well aware of what each property is saying what is the meaning of each property so please go through it nicely and then in next class we will be dealing with some examples of how to use these properties to write character table or in other words write the irreducible representations all the irreducible representations of a particular point group without actually worrying about what is the basis set what are the symmetry operations what are the effect of symmetry operations nothing we are going to do we are just going to write directly the character table or the trace or the irreducible representations directly so this theorem is very very important so try to go through it once again all the properties and let's discuss again in the next class how to implement these properties to write down various reducible representations thank you